In the last lecture, we learned about one-to-many relationship using embedded documents. And there we learned that since a customer cannot have too many payment methods, he cannot add too many card details for making the purchase from an application. That's why using embedded documents for implementing one-to-many relationship in that case is okay. But what if we want to create a one-to-many relationship between customer and the orders which they have made using our application? Here also, there is going to be a one-to-many relationship between the customer and the order details because the order details is going to have an order ID, the date on which the order was made and the product ID which the customer has purchased. So, no two customers can have the same order detail, right? No two order details can have the same order ID. Otherwise, it would be difficult to track which customer has made which order. So, the relation between the customer and the orders which he has made it is going to be unique. One customer could have made hundreds of orders, but the order details itself is going to be unique. No two order details is going to be same. So here also we have one to many relationship between the customer and the orders which he has made. But here we should not use embedded documents for creating the one to many relationship. Why? Because a customer could have made hundreds or thousands of orders using our application. If we use embedded document approach here, that means we will have to store those hundreds or thousand order details document in the same customer document. And because of that, the maximum size of the overall document might exceed 16 MB. So here we have that possibility that the overall document size might increase 16 MB because the number of orders which a single customer has made can be in hundreds or thousands. So here, Using embedded documents for creating one-to-many relationship is not a good idea. And this is one scenario where we can use references for creating one-to-many relation between two collections. So let's go ahead and let's create a collection. Let's call it orders. And here let's go ahead and let's insert a document. I'm going to use this insert one method for that. And here I'm going to specify the ID, the order ID. I'll say one, then date, I'm going to use new date object. And to this, let's pass a string specifying the date. Say 03-02-2011. And then let's also specify the product ID. So let's call it maybe PID. Here, I'm going to specify product ID as an array because in the same order, the customer might have purchased multiple products. Okay, so here I'm going to specify some product IDs, maybe one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say for this order, the customer has purchased two products. All right, let's go ahead and let's run this command. Now here we have a problem because here for this PID, we have used this equal to sign, so it should be colon. All right, now let's go ahead and let's run this command. So one order detail has been added in the orders collection. Let's go ahead and let's add one more order detail. So here I will change the ID to 2. Let's also change the date. 2016. And let's specify product IDs as 123789. Let's go ahead and let's insert this order also in the orders collection. Again, I'll add one more order. So here I will change the ID to 3. Let's also change the date to maybe 7. And let's change the year to 2018. And for the PID array, let's specify some product IDs, maybe 3, 4, 5. And let's say for this order, there were 3 products purchased. Okay, let's go ahead and let's press enter. And let's add one more order. So I will change this underscore ID to 4. Let's change the date to maybe 2022. And here I'm only going to have one product. Let's say 563. This is the product ID. Let's go ahead and let's press enter. All right. Now let's go ahead and let's query the orders collection. So let's say DB dot orders dot find. I press enter 
Here you can see in this orders collection, we have four documents. Now let's go ahead and let's relate this orders collection with the customer collection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the update one method on the customer collection. And there, let's say I want to update this collection where the name is Mark. And there I want to add a new field. Okay. And let's call this field orders. To this, I'm going to assign an array because one customer can have multiple orders. And inside that, I'm going to specify some order IDs. So here I will specify one, two, and maybe four. Okay, let's go ahead and let's press enter. And let's also go ahead and let's modify the first document where the name is John. So here I will change the filter as name equals John. And there, let's say John has made only one order. And that order ID is three. Because as I mentioned, two customers cannot have same order details. So in the orders collection, we have four orders with ID one, two, three, and four. And this first, second, and fourth order is made by Mark. And this third order, we are specifying that it is made by John. Okay, here I cannot go ahead and add, let's say two also, because two customers cannot have made the same order. I hope you got my point. All right, let's go ahead and let's press enter. So again, uh, that document has also been modified. Now let's go ahead and let's query our customer collection. For that, on this customer collection, let's use this find method. And now you can see each document here, each customer document now also has this orders field. And this orders field is an array which is storing the ID of the order from the orders collection. Let's try to use the lookup operator on the customer collection and let's join this orders collection with the customer collection. So for that, let's say db.customer.aggregate here let's pass an array there let's use dollar lookup operator and to this we need to assign a document inside this document we need to specify from field so here this from field is going to be assigned with the orders collection so here i will say orders which is the collection name so basically here we want to join this customer collection with this orders collection so to this from field we are specifying the name of that collection then we need to specify the local field so basically the local field is that field which is storing a reference to the related collection. Here, this orders field is storing a reference, an ID from the orders collection. So here, the local field is going to be orders. Then we also need to specify foreign field. Now, this foreign field is going to be the foreign key, the field using which we are creating the relation. So here, this orders field is storing an ID and these ID values are basically the ID value of this underscore ID field. So this is the foreign field here because using this field only we are relating with this orders collection from our customer collection. So here this foreign field is going to be underscore ID. And finally, let's also specify an alias for that we use this as field and here let's say this field is going to be maybe order details. You can name this anything. With this, let's press enter and let's see if it works. Here again, we have an error. That's because instead of square brackets, we need to use a set of curly braces. So let's change it to curly braces. All right, let's now go ahead and let's press enter. And now we are getting the proper result. So for the first document where the name is John, here you can see we have our order details. So this customer has only made one order. So this is the order detail. Then the second customer where the customer name is Mark, this customer has made three orders. So here we are merging the customer collection with the orders collection using the dollar lookup operator. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.